do you see this? This is happening all over the world right now, such as from Hong Kong to India to Canada and even Brazil. The world's hospitals have become increasingly overcrowded due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Hospitals manage their emergency departments using triage because some patients simply need to be given a higher priority level than others. Clearly, the woman with the sheer heart attack would go first over the man who just stubbed his toe. However, if we take a look inside, we can see that there is an issue. When roughly 40% of triages are wrong according to the U.S. Emergency Nurses Association, you know that there's an issue on our hands. Just imagine the worst case scenario. The woman with the heart attack denied to the man who stopped his toe. Apply that worst case scenario to the whole world and we have a problem on our hands that needs addressing. Now, how exactly do we remedy this problem? Well, we can use a machine learning algorithm, which we can teach to predict triage based on the data of past patients. What we want to do is to make an algorithm that given a patient's vital signs, chief complaints, and basic info such as age, predict whether or not a patient would be sent to the ICU to be sent to another hospital ward or to be discharged. So let's say that this is our training data. Now let's plot the patient's age against their heart rate. These were the patients who were sent to the ICU, these ones were hospitalized, and these patients were discharged. Let's draw some separators called decision boundaries. Now let's say an untriaged person walks in. Given their age and heart rate, we plot it and notice it's to the left of the first decision boundary. Thus, they are sent to the ICU. We can then test our model's accuracy by having it predict the triage of past patients. With that in mind, what we want to do is to make a model that is more accurate than nurses. Said model will then be added to an Android application, which would accept patient data, predict their triage, and then add patients to a waiting list ordered according to priority. Now, how do we do this? Well, first of all, we need data. So we use data from over 200,000 patients. This was followed up with data cleaning and undersampling, which we did by removing all null and inaccurate values from the data, and then balanced out the class distributions. It's important that our class distributions are roughly equal in order to make the model make accurate predictions without bias towards the majority. After that, we performed one hot encoding on the data to turn the text-based variables into something understandable by computers. As for the coding of the machine learning models, we tested six of them. To optimize their performance, we looped through all possible combinations of the model settings in order to find the one that yielded the highest accuracy. We then tested our models using tenfold cross-validation, which uses different parts of the data to train and test our models. We measured the model's accuracy by averaging it across 10 folds. Using our best model, we move on to the coding of the Android application. First, we have the user input the patient's data onto the first screen of our application, which data is then stored in a string array. It is then sent to our machine learning model, which makes a prediction. On the second screen of our application, we can see how the app sorts out the patient's predictions using a priority queue. Now, let us take a look at our model results. As we can see, the random forest model outperformed all other models and nurses in predicting ICU admissions. However, nurses have a lower false negative rate than our model, meaning that they are better at identifying patients not at risk. On the other hand, our model is three times better at identifying patients who are at risk compared to nurses. Similarly, the multi-layer perceptron outperformed the other models and nurses in predicting hospitalization. With hospitalization, our models have significantly lower false positive and negative rates than nurses. All in all, if nurses get to use this application, it could help them triage faster and more accurately. Our app could also substitute nurses in the case of disasters, where nurses simply cannot treat everyone at once. Just imagine having your life saved by a small program on a phone like this. Thank you very much.